right, okay. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Larry James. My company is Speak With Larry, No Spaces. And today we have uh, a guy by the name of Scott Cavney. Is that, uh, Cavney. am I pronouncing that right? Cavney. Cavney. So, how you, so how you pronounce it is, you have a cave in front of you, you just crawl on your knees. Ah. Into a small cave, so Cavney. Uh, Cavney, yeah. Scott Cavney. Okay, that's, Scott, how you, that's how you remember it. Ah, good enough, Scott. Scott is the CEO of an organization called Live Extraordinary Inc. Yep. He's also number one best-selling author for LinkedIn Strategies. He's yep. a life coach and an athlete, and he resides in the Park City, Utah area. Is that correct, Scott? That is correct. Okay, well, welcome to uh, the Speak with Larry show. Well, thanks, Larry. It's great to be on. Okay, so Scott, tell my uh, my audience a little bit about a little bit more about what it is that you do besides uh, become being an athlete and a life coach, and uh, those well, help, things. Well, I help people with their LinkedIn profiles and developing them to increase more visibility, but I also help them with uh, messaging and being able to direct message every single person in their network in, in a very fast period of time. I'm not saying that fast is really the, the word. It's not the operative word. It's, it's efficiency. Gotcha. Gotcha. So gotcha. it's a strategy where people can interact with you in such a way where, you know, you, the messages will come off authentic, even though they're automatic, but they're in such a way where people can, um, you can get more interaction with your business and with relationships and, and uh, building see. those. I'll say, I'll say. So uh, what was that got you interested in the writing part? Like you say, you're a best-selling author. What was it that made you um, become want to become a writer, or was that just something that? Actually, it wasn't even planned. I wasn't even sure why. Um, in the first place, I was thinking about writing a book, but shortly thereafter, when I decided to start it, it was actually through um, intuition to actually just get it started. January of 2019 mm -hmm. was essentially I, I had an idea that was forming. Uh, I started this business May 15, 2018, and the real ideas of how this whole thing worked. I had, I started it with my own account and I grew my account from 574 people to over 38,000 connections wow. in the last year or 2018 to 2019. Mm -hmm. And actually even more than that uh, now a little bit. And so I have two different accounts. So, but I was mainly doing a lot of experimentation with it because I wanted to make sure that the idea was viable for, for me to help other people. So that took Pretty much over a year. I mean, I jumped out of my job in December 2018, and it was a little bit premature. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was the right thing to do because I hated, I hated computer science. I hated um, being a coder or being a uh, software engineer. So I oh, switched okay. over to being a uh, marketer. I've always wanted to do psychology and business, right. and I'm in both of those fields now. So, so um, but, but some of it is actually is some of it's integrated, like the uh, the uh, the automation pieces that's part of engineering. So, yeah. So would you say that you found your passion in doing what it is that you do? Yep. Uh, and there's nothing like living within your passion, is it? Especially when you can generate an income from that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a journey. I believe that's really the path we are all supposed to take. Find out what it is that we enjoy doing and then perfect that. You know, you know they say those 10,000 hours will make you an expert. But sometimes that 10,000 hours takes 10 years, <laughs> you know. It takes a long time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And I, and I, because I just passed the 10 year mark in my business. And, you know, there were uh, peaks and valleys, but it was, it was never a point where I said, I'm not going to continue this, you know, because I love doing what I was doing, even when I wasn't really making any money, you know. Right. So, that, that let me know, too, that it was something that I needed to pursue because it brought me joy. And I feel like I'm helping people in the process, right? Exactly. Which, which I believe we're actually supposed to be givers. We're supposed to be able to give. And through the design of the universe, we'll receive. That's exactly right. It's all about giving. It's, right. it's about giving your time, giving what it is you know, and then having other people benefit from, from what it is that you're doing. Absolutely. And not have any expectation. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about giving and giving and not having the expectation. Right, right. I believe when you have that expectation, you're not giving from the right place. Exactly. And there's a fine balance because we don't want to sell ourselves short. If we really want to, uh, Gary talks about that we want to be, 
we want to be in two spaces. One is in a state of giving with no expectation of what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Another state is actually um, giving with a mutual expectation back. Yeah, and absolutely. that's a negotiation. Absolutely. There, there's a time and place for it, both of them, but, but it needs to be in balance. Balance is the word. There you go. That's a good word. I like that word. Yeah, so, thank you. Uh, I, I like to ask uh, my uh, guest here, how did you uh, grow up? Like, were you uh, like raised by your mother and father? or were you? Oh, I was adopted. I was adopted from Seoul, Korea when I was three months old. Okay. I had a twin okay. brother that came with me. Uh -huh. and we, we were, we lived in Colorado. I mean, that's where we grew up with okay. um, my adopted dad and my, my adopted mom. They both divorced when we were three. And mm -hmm. so that created more complication. Right. And I lived with my mom from three to 13 and my dad remarried to a, to my stepmom. And basically I moved to live with my dad from 13 up until co through college. In Colorado as well? Yep. Uh, okay. All of it in Colorado. Yeah. I didn't move to Utah until five years ago. Uh -huh. So I'm 36 right now, but I moved when I was 31 to Utah because I, the ski team here, they, they have a phenomenal facility. Have you been to the Utah Olympic facility training center here? No, I haven't. Uh -uh. Park City? Well, they have a jumping facility. I'm a freestyle skier. So I, I train with uh, Park City Freestyle. I did. I'm with Wasatch Freestyle. And I um, train with that team to do ski jumps because I did gymnastics when I was a teenager. And so okay. um, basically I grew up doing it. And so I can still do those things, which is awesome. I, I don't, I don't believe in limitation uh, with a little bit of age. It's not much, uh -huh. but yeah, I mean, I really enjoy being here and living my dream. This is, that's also another dream that I have other than growing this LinkedIn business. So mm -hmm. that's another something you can teach, you know, because there are a lot of people that are interested in that type of thing. You know, that's one of the things I try to share with people as far as like, especially with this quarantine segment that we're in right now. Oh, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. But it's, it's ideal for you to gain some, uh, another skill, you know? Well, it's totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, don't, I can't recall a day where I was not working uh, during this quarantine. And so, right. Absolutely. you know, I, I've been that way for the last eight months, but it, it really wasn't new news to me to stay at home. I mean, I've been mostly been obsessed learning about, you know, LinkedIn marketing and, you know, increasing my skills in Adobe Premiere and, you know, all these other programs. And I, I don't know. I mean, I felt like I've gotten like five years worth of knowledge <laughs> in like the last eight months. Like my head. Right, right, me. right. I do understand that. Let me ask you this, uh, Scott. <clears throat> How important would you say a mentor or a coach is on your journey? That's vital. I agree. I agree. It's, it's self awareness is being able to be self aware of your thoughts, your feelings. Mm -hmm. And any sort of nuances of feelings, like if you're going to enter into a relationship with a, with a potential business partner and something's a little bit off, then I don't follow that. I only follow, you know, what my intuition calls my bliss. Right, right. Following right. bliss, then things seem to unfold very nicely. And even though there are times where it doesn't, mm -hmm. um, you need to still trust that process. Because I think there's a Robert Frost um, quote that says, um, or not Robert Frost, it was um, Steve Jobs, like even if it takes you off the well-worn path and that'll make all the difference. So it's following your heart. Uh-huh, right, right, absolutely. And I also believe that uh, as you're venturing into, like my company teaches you how to set up the foundation of your online business while assisting you with becoming more comfortable speaking about it because the speaking aspect is another uh, avenue of generating income. Once exactly. you decide to start an online business. And, uh, a lot of people I've found have a fear of speaking. Do you, have you had an opportunity to speak at different events yet? I did. Okay. Uh, last October was my first event. In okay. speaking. How, how was that for you? Oh, it was, it was awesome. Uh, okay. I was up there. I had a presentation prepared. And at the very end, I, I gave a book away to somebody. Okay. Um, okay. And it, it was fun. It was kind of like a raffle sort of at the very end. So, right. right. Like, who can answer this question about um, how, how much has LinkedIn grown from 2018 to 2019? How much and has so people, people would guess, and it's four times more. So oh, really? like it went from 160, 160 billion to 640 billion in 2019. Wow. wow. Way more, or not billion, million. Oh, now it's up at a billion right now. That's impressive. That's Over impressive. a billion. But you know, the online, uh, the online uh, arena is where I believe uh, the next, probably the next five to 10 years will make um, a multitude of millionaires because you know, this, this business, this industry here can 10 X something very, very quickly. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Especially online. And especially what you and I are doing. Mm -hmm. 
It's amazing. Yes, especially now. And that's why I see that. That's why I say a lot of times people like my, my target market are what you would call the baby boomer generation, right? Uh, mm -hmm. those I, didn't think you, I didn't think you were that age. I thought you were younger. I thought no, you were I'm like. That, I'm that age. But, oh, wow. Yeah. But those people like myself, uh, they um, want to do something, but the, this apparatus called a computer kind of throws them off, you know, because they think it's so much to learn and so difficult to learn it. But yeah. it's just the opposite, you know, because it is. it's been so refined that it, it's almost, you know, A, B, C. Would you agree? Totally. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. So uh, what's your target market? Who, who are your uh, target market that you market your products and services to? Well, it, it actually could be anybody, but I would say mostly restaurants, mostly people that are struggling right now. Mm -hmm. um, there are other people that are network marketing that actually would really benefit with what I'm doing because uh -huh. they want to talk to people and get, you know, phone numbers and emails on a daily basis that they want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I have to remind them, it's not about getting people. It's about connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to take some time. I, I let people know upfront, it's going to take some time for you to develop these relationships and develop these warm connections, but it's residual because if you go from like zero to 10,000 in a year, then those 10,000 could be all your followers if you do it the correct way. And from there, they'll buy all your stuff at the very end, but right. you've got to be patient with it. It's, right. it's one of those things where I had to learn it myself. I mean, 2018 and 2019, I wasn't very patient. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I admit I, I did some things that, I'm not proud of, which was a little bit on the low towards the spam side, but um, I mean, I'm totally against spam by the way, but I was experimenting at the time and I was willing to take risks. I was right. willing to jump and look like an idiot um, to see what it was that worked. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to leap and do those things. And many people may not understand it, but regardless if people understand it or not, you have to follow your heart mm -hmm. and not care what other people think. And sure, so sure. that's the stage where I'm at right now. And so, you know, I've gotten, you know, a few clients. I have six clients right now and I'm growing very quickly, but mm -hmm. it took a long time to uh, propagate from the book to actually seeing the actual physical results that are, that are showing for me right now. And so right, right. it just takes normal. time. I mean, I've only been in this business for two years, uh -huh. a little bit less than two years. So I, I give, I forgive myself. I, I'm giving myself the mercy of time here. I know that's in two true. years from now, I'm going to, I'm going to blow up. I know, well, you know that's got that's kind of normal, you know, for people to struggle like that at first. Because what I share with people is anything you just decide to take on new, you're not going to be good at it at first. You're not that's exactly right. But if you keep doing it, you'll get better, and that's how life works. You know, when you started to do the skiing or whatever it was that you do, uh, you weren't good at first. No, you know what I'm it took a lot. No, of I was actually a, a 23 year old trying to learn skiing, and actually it looked, it looked like I sucked. And I went through a lot of criticism and a lot of basically crap uh -huh. before at 20, 26, I started getting pretty good. Okay. So it, I have a, it's odd because I'm a decade older than a lot of people when a lot of people would start a little bit more, mm. but I had a heart and I had a will mm -hmm. and I knew I had a gymnastics background, so I knew I could succeed in it mm -hmm. and I wanted to meet, make this be a career. And my first fist license, you know, which is the international ski association, for you know, skiing at World Cup eventually. I got that at 30. Wow. Which is actually unheard of because most people get it in their late teens or 20s. Yeah. 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 I'm just a decade, you know, I'm a, I started a decade later, but so what? If you look at we live up to be 120 years old, that's nothing. Well, that's not nothing. only that, but not only that, but if you enjoy it, you know, because see, you just you have to enjoy think it. about this. When when people go to the Olympics, right? Everybody doesn't come out one number one. <laughs> Please yeah. do that, right? But that, does that take away from the number two or number three or number four block slot? No, you yeah. did the best, you know, and then you made it to a, a place that a lot of people never will get to, you know, so you got to be proud of that. Like I always share with people, we're our hardest, harshest critic. We're the one who keeps us from success because a lot of times what will happen is you'll work hard, work hard, work hard, and you'll position yourself to for an opportunity. And then vicariously the universe will bring an opportunity to you and you won't take it now you've been working hard working hard working hard for this opportunity and the opportunity comes and you talk yourself out of it yeah exactly uh, so that, you can't do that you can't do that you got to keep moving forward because i had an interview last week with a guy that was uh uh he was he had started billion billion dollar companies 
and he was worth probably 30 or 40 million. But he was talking, we were talking about uh, how important it is to fail, you know, because as you fail, if you don't stop, you won't fail at that again. You know, you'll get better. And that's how, that's how the learning process works, even as a child. When you were growing, trying to learn how to walk, you would fall, get back up, try it again, fall, get back up, try it again, until you got comfortable and you mastered it, right? That's it's totally right. Yeah, I mean, that's like this, that. is not, this is not any different. And we all start at zero followers. We all start at zero. Right, right. And then another thing, too, is uh, as you get more um, familiar with what you're doing, your confidence increases. Right? Exactly. Confidence is very important because, you know, a lot of times uh, you will be shaky in the beginning, but because of your knowledge of self, you know, you got this, you know, you know, you can do it. You just exactly. have to do it, you know, and then uh, once you start and the, the bell starts rolling or the ball starts rolling, then you get in sync. You know what I'm saying? You start, exactly. you know, you're there because that's what you've been training for all this time. And that's one of the things I like about life. Life gives us opportunities based on, you know, the effort that we're willing to put into it. You know, if you, if you say I'm gonna do, like if you say you're gonna start your business and you never worked on it, you know, you never read any books, you never studied anybody, but you kept saying you're gonna start your business, start your business, then you, what you're saying is not matching with what you're doing. Exactly. So you always have, you always Most have part of the secret. What you're doing. Oh, yep. He always talks about action along mm -hmm. with visualization and feeling the feelings of having it now. You got to right. have all of it. Right, right. Absolutely. So uh, when you first started teaching your first client, how did that, how did that feel to you? What was that like? It was, was hard. Apprehensive? <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, that first client wasn't really a client because I gave all of my uh, time and my effort for free because I wanted to show them how this worked and granted yeah. they liked it, but I was torturing myself because I didn't ask for what I wanted, which was a mutual benefit. Uh -huh. And so when it got up to about four clients or about five, uh, this was way back in January uh -huh. that I had to let them go because they'd been holding on to me for about five months and I was helping them grow their, and I, and I, I'm glad I caught myself before it got to the year mark or, or whatever. But I realized that my, my services are way too valuable to just be given away for free. And we have to all go through that. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be completely transparent about this because this is how we learn. Mm -hmm. you right. know? And after that January, when I trusted myself and, you know, let them go and bless them on their way, mm -hmm. I got new clients that are paying me. Monthly. Right, right. A lot of times we <laughs> undervalue our, our input. Like you, you will say, like I have, uh, I'm, I'm an author as well. And I've written, uh, some some regular books ebooks and a lot of times what we do like i create online courses as well right and then you have to price those online courses so you know it makes you look within yourself and say well you know how hard did i work at this or will my audience be able to afford this you know that's why you have to do your little due diligence and uh, identify your market that you're targeting because you know if you mark like me my target market are like i say baby boomers people who are like 50 to 65. So most of those people don't have $600 to pay for a course, right? So exactly. it wouldn't make sense for me to create courses and market to them and charge that price. It would make no sense. But most of them can't afford $40 or $50, you know? And it depends on how many modules, you know, you have in your course. And, you want, and I, I like to keep things simple because people understand simple, right? And as long as I'm sharing things in a way that walks you through the process, but my, my, my second favorite topic is personal development. I believe you should be working on self. All I love time. it. I love personal development as well. Every day you need, cause it's you, it's you. Like if I ask you, which is what I always ask my clients initially, do, what is your passion? You should be able to identify what that is because it's you. Nobody else knows that. You may be good at something, but that might not be what you're passionate about, right? Exactly. You might be wanting to do something that you've never done. Like say you would like to play golf, but you've never played it, but you love it. So the first time you do it, you're probably going to be terrible, right? But you so love a lot of people don't take action because they're afraid of that vulnerability. 
Right, right, right. But you'll get better. And see, the the thing that I'm I keep stressing to people is that you want to focus on becoming an expert, not getting better. You want to focus on becoming an expert, which will take time. It right. Does. But if it's based in line with your passion, time's not not really relevant to you, right? So exactly. one of the ways one of the ways I share with them to identify what the passion is is this. Imagine that you walk into a bookstore or a library. As soon as you get inside the front door, which section kind of pulls you that way, right? Is it the self-help section? Is it the automotive section? You know, whatever it is for you, then go there and that's a good place to start. You know, because what we do is share information. So whether you share it via video or via blog or audio, I have a podcast, an audio podcast I do every Monday. So regardless of the ways that you're sharing information, you're sharing information. So if you're sharing information on something you love or have a passion for or are interested in learning about, then the people that hear you or see you are still getting the results, right? Exactly. Yep. And then they're getting to know you because it's about people buy from those they know, like, and trust. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. the way you do that is you got to be in front of people, right? Totally. Yeah. And that email system we were talking about a minute ago, that's a good way to stay in, you know, in front of people. You know, once you set it up automatically, you know, I know uh, my my uh, email system is Aweber. Uh, is that the one you use or you use a different one? Oh, I use MailChimp, but I, MailChimp? Okay. I used Aweber before. Uh huh. Yeah, but they're, they're, they do the same thing, you know. So yeah. once you understand that process and get everything, you know, where it's automatic or automated because I'm big on automation. I like that, don't you? Yeah, me too. It cuts down on a whole lot of the mistakes that you can make and just, you know, it just repeats the process. So as a, as a goal for 2020, what, what's one of your goals that you have for set for 2020? Well, my goal is to get up to 100 clients. Like, I, like this is very recent that I gotten six already. And yeah, but 100 is a lot. Back in March. Yeah. So that's starting to grow. Uh, I, I know I can do 100 because it's just infinitely scalable. I've, I figured out how to accommodate more virtual machines for more people to um, do work with me. How far and along I, do you take them once once they start? Or once they do you take over the process? Are you saying that how long do I take? No, no I say do, how long do you take them? Do you, or do you actually take over the process and do it for them? Uh, I take over the process and do it for them. And oh, basically, okay. yeah, a lot. Of, I value communication a lot. Mm -hmm. And these six people, uh, some of them are more communicative than others, and they give me some wonderful feedback. Right. And even though there's a mutual benefit, uh, some of them don't communicate at all because they think that they, it's a turn on switch. And I encourage people that if they're doing business with me, that they got to put in some effort too. They Absolutely. need to go to some parts of LinkedIn as well. Because the last thing, I, I don't want to drag people to the finish line. I don't want to be dragging people. Right. Um, I want people to be uh, eager and know that, you know, I'm, I'm actually get familiar with what they're doing because it works. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. There, there are people that make sales from what it is that I'm doing. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's just, and some people are complaining that they're just getting conversations of people that maybe they, they haven't been totally targeted to that, mm -hmm. you know, that aren't necessarily interested in what their services are, but that's all about communication. And in the welcome email that I send other people, it, is, it specifies in a Google document that please, if, if there's something that you would like to share, please put it in there. So that way I can better understand your target market. Right. And hardly anybody has, has filled that out. And so this could be another shift for me where I find newer people to where they're more proactive about things. I just, mm -hmm. I just know that based on from last year to this year, it's been an evolution. And right. I know that right. people that I keep attracting are better and better and better. Each yeah, time. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I another thing too, process. another thing too, Scott, is the more you probably learned this from Gary too, the more targeted you can get on your on your audience, the better results you'll get too, because everybody's not interested. You know what I'm saying? Like when I wrote my first book, I knew nothing about marketing. But even worse, I didn't know I needed to know anything about marketing, you know. Yeah, so, right. You know, a lot of times if I'm trying to share something with let's say I'm, a, I'm selling something. Let's say I'm selling golf balls. I wouldn't send out one email to a basketball player. <laughs> I'm saying, I wouldn't have sent one <laughs> right. email to a football player. I'd send them all to golfers, right? Totally. That just makes sense. And then your, your chance of success in that arena, familiarity too, because 
they know what you, they know the language you're speaking, right? Right, exactly. And I even ask those questions when I'm on the phone before they, you know, hop on board with me. Mm-hmm. And they, they do the best they can, and I'm doing the best I can in documenting what, what their target market is. Mm-hmm. But I also let them know that if it doesn't work exactly two weeks later, that it's not working for them exactly, that we try something else. It's, it, uh-huh. you know, this is a part where I'm still a little bit struggling of not being as hard on myself because um, this is, I, I want the best for people. I want mm-hmm. people to succeed. I want people to grow their networks and feel satisfied with the people that they're talking to and who they, who, who they targeted. Mm-hmm. But I know it's not going to always be that way because there there might be some other components to that. Well, not I only value that, you so much. So not only that, you have to you have to be able to uh, understand the growth that they're experiencing. If if you can see that they're not really growing, you you need to be able to identify that as quickly as possible because that's where the adjustments would need to come in. Because some people will just continue allowing the process to go on without really even you know, doing their part, you know, well, what makes it easy is they're paying me. So yeah, if, well, I, if, they, if they don't want, if they don't want to have, if they're not interested, then don't pay me. Yeah, then I, I'm stop. not interested in your money. I'm interested right, right. in helping you succeed. But let me ask you this question about LinkedIn. Uh, I was uh, interested because I just passed, I'm coming up on uh, 2,400, almost 2,500 connections on LinkedIn. Okay. I cool. thought that was a lot, but, but come to find out that's nothing, right? Yeah, one guy yeah. said he had and that's something that we could talk about after the interview. For sure. oh, okay, yeah, I was like, wow, and but I, I'm not really on LinkedIn a lot, but I am on LinkedIn a lot, you know. But that's not my primary uh, way of reaching out to people. Are you familiar with a system called OnlyWire? You ever heard of that? Sounds familiar. Tell me yeah. more. Uh, what OnlyWire does? It allows you to. It, it's a paid service, but it's only ten dollars a month. What it allows you to do is register your OnlyWire account with Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these different places. And once you do, once I make a post on OnlyWire, it goes to all those places. And it's, okay, cool. Um, there's something like 50 places that you can send it to. It reminds me of Hootsuite, like it. It's yeah, similar it's similar to that. To that. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I, you know, when you're first when you're first starting out, uh, numbers mean something to people. You know, like when people see how many views they got or how many likes they got that has an effect, you know? So it does. I like to guide people in a way where they see successes kind of early, you know, because that's another motivator that keeps you moving in the right direction. And I exactly. also like to set people up on uh, 30, 60, 90 day processes, right? Because they're easier to evaluate. Especially yep. coming from a, a, a perspective where you have to monitor the growth of someone so that uh, because see, I don't like wasting people's time. A lot of time, like even if they're paying me, if you're not doing the work, I don't. I don't like that because I don't like that either. Yep. Yeah. Uh, to I me, you're not you. really getting it. And then you can say, well, for as a reference, you'll say, well, yeah, I I paid him for three months, but I didn't really get anything out of it. I don't yeah. like that. You know, that's not what that's not what I, what I go for. But I'm I'm more in, in line with giving you a, a beginning, a middle, and an ending within a 30, 60, or 90 day process, right? Yep. So that means I have to know what that beginning, middle, and ending is for them to follow, right? Yep. And then by knowing that, it's easy for me to say, well, okay, are you on uh, section two? Or are you on section four? Or where are you at? Because that w- that way it'll let me know that you're doing the work. Exactly, yeah. yep. But, but my format is a little bit different than yours because you actually do the work. I don't do the work. I just teach you how to do the work, you know, and that, that to me is a, is a, a see, I like to do things as hands off as possible, you know, but well, I'm kind of the same way too. I, I'm just, this is a, a, one of those things where I'm in trans transfer for transition. So uh-huh. uh, going back to what you were asking, I definitely want to get up to a hundred clients, mm-hmm. but I also want to transfer that into mastermind groups to where ah. I'm selling tickets. So I teach them this stuff. So gotcha. they can do it themselves. Mm-hmm. Now that hasn't been developed yet, but um, it's in the process of I'm actually creating, you know, flyers and things right. that, that I prepared that for, for my first mastermind that's coming up virtually, mm-hmm. and then it'll be in person after that and teaching right. other people, right. guest speakers, that's and stuff very like that. Interesting. Very interesting. How do you feel about uh, teaching people the uh, digital marketing process? Because I see you understand digital marketing very well too, right? Yep. 
Okay. What so would, I love teaching that. What would you say is the difference between just regular conventional marketing or digital marketing? Well, conventional marketing is like billboards and business call like regular it. TV, uh, which can cost a lot of money. Uh -huh. Digital marketing is like at a fraction of that. Right, right. And Gary Vee always talks about that we're in an era where we can take advantage of the cheapest marketing ever mm -hmm. and, and how we and how we use it is to our leverage. And actually reach a lot more people. Right? It's, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because I, I love that concept because, you know, um, what, what, one of the things that I share with people is when you do things online, you need to have a three-prong approach. You need to have the written word, which is the blog, you need to have the audio, and you need to have the video. Exactly. You need to have all those at once, but you need to start. I always suggest that you start with which one you're most comfortable with. If yep. you're more comfortable with writing, you should start a blog. You know, if you're more comfortable with a with the with the with the microphone without sit being seen, you should have an audio podcast. And exactly. Then, and then you got YouTube videos, YouTube Live, you got Facebook Live, you got Zoom. There's so many platforms that you can utilize to increase your viewership or your your audience. Because I believe this is what I share with my clients from the beginning. You have to understand the concept that you're going to be creating an audience and this audience doesn't know you yet. They don't know anything about you. They don't know what you do. They don't know anything. So you want to introduce who you are, what you do and how what you do can help them. Right. Exactly. And then they'll yep. make a decision whether or not you're somebody that can help them. Right. But you have to be specific on how you introduce those things, because as I said, everything is not for everybody. And a lot of times we, as human beings, are very visual, right? A lot of times you'll eliminate somebody because you don't like the way they look. You know what I'm saying? It may be conscious or unconscious, but we're like that sometimes. Oh, yeah, I, I've right. listened to speeches. I've gone to seminars where I hear the speakers speaking, and I didn't, couldn't focus on what they were saying because I didn't like the way they were sounding, you know? And uh, that's just yeah. part of it, you know? So how, yeah. how would you recommend uh, someone that's interested in, opening or starting a LinkedIn account, start to get their connections up? Well, I would first know what is exactly you want to create for a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to advertise yourself, you know, as a personal brand or you're starting a restaurant or mm -hmm. whatever it is. I mean, you got to know your target niche. Right, first. right. You got to know right. what it is that you love doing. Then what I would do is create um, surrounding content that will help build your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. uh, and that surrounds that niche. And then from that, you, you know, you know, cr you create more of that brand of yourself. So when you, when you uh, fill out more of the profile information, the visibility, the more of the keywords and the visibility will help other people find you. So mm -hmm. like the tagline needs to be very contributing, such as I help people, blah, blah, blah. Even mm -hmm. though I personally don't, you know, I don't do that, but mm -hmm. I know that I've done that in the past where I did, I help people with blah, blah, blah. And then, people would come up to me and say, Hey, what, what is that, that, that exactly you do? Gotcha, gotcha. So you can also put in the about section, which is what I did. It uh -huh. says, uh, do you, do you hate working nine to five or are you tired of looking in the mirror every day and asking yourself you're too late to achieve your dreams? So like a hook sort of a question, right, right, uh, right. which keeps people engaged. And then they read the entire, then you want to make sure that your story is, you know, congruent to that. And then from uh -huh. there, you know, act, have a call to action at the very end. So that would ha that would actually be the way I, on how I would build my profile, and as mm -hmm. well as, you know, increasing the uh, recommendations that maybe you worked with people in the past, and and filling that one up because the more credibility and social proof you have, the better off you'll be. So gotcha. that's so how you, I would start. If, if you're going if you're going to have that system set up like that with LinkedIn, but you didn't want to come off as spamming or spammy, uh, what what's uh, like a good amount of time you think that it should take for both me just starting my LinkedIn page and getting comfortable with the process so that I can constantly work on increasing it based on what you're teaching me. Is well, it like a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day? Well, actually that's a really good question because it depends on the person. So let's say it's your first day and you connect with maybe seven people that you know. So you, you have seven connections. Okay. Those seven people, have a network of maybe hundred people, maybe that's in your niche. So let's say you're targeting people that are in restaurants or that are Mexican food. Mm -hmm. You connect with people that 
of your seven of the second degree that they know that may be in restaurants. So that seven could be 30 that you could be connecting with. So when you connect with those 30 people, then those 30 people would probably most likely more, know more about restaurant people. Mm -hmm. So that 30 people eventually become 600 and that 600 becomes, you know, right. 60,000. So that's how a network can spread very quickly. But the first few weeks, I, I would have to say this, I'm careful with my words. So the first month is going to be pretty slow. Okay. You'll see the results because, you know, I would be sending, I'd be helping you send messages to people mm -hmm. that are in that niche, but don't expect like jumping up to 10,000 in, in the next month. I mean, right. that's, that's not realistic. Exactly. So I've seen people that grow from seven to about 250 in a month mm -hmm. to, or, or 700 or seven to 500 in a month. So it, it just depends on what niche you're in. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, as a, as a legacy, like one of the things that I look at, uh, cause I'm, like I said, I'm an older guy. So, uh, it's important for me to leave a legacy. Um, uh, yeah. and right now today I have over 900 videos on YouTube, right? My objective is to make a path or a trail for not my children or my grandchildren, but my great grandchildren and great, great grandchildren to be able to identify who I was and some of the things that I did while I was on this planet. Uh, do you have anything in mind like that as far as leaving Completely. a legacy for yourself? The, the dream of, of saying that I've made it, mm -hmm. you know, in, in World Cup or the Olympics, and also saying that I've developed this business that has made a difference in millions of people's lives. Mm -hmm. Those okay. are my two legacies. And in fact, they, they tie in very mm -hmm. well because the LinkedIn provides the residual income for me to do that. Right, and, right. Um, you know, since, the, since I'm, you know, using some of the things some of the mundane stuff that could be on automated, which is I automate that it saves a lot of time. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. That's good. That's great, great. Great. Cause a lot of people, you know, uh, if they, uh, one of the guys I was studying, cause I studied quite a few podcasts because you know, like my objective for doing these 50 interviews is to create my own audio podcast next year, uh, video podcast next year. And you know, I like to get familiar with things before I just jump in the water especially since I have plenty of time now, you know, cause I'm about to retire from, from my job pretty soon. And, uh, this is what I'll be doing all, you know, full time. So I know every, I know all the moving parts, but I like to continually add different streams or different arms along the way as I learn those different, you know, streams. And I share with people that the best time to learn is when you don't have money, because when you don't have money, you're not distracted. By what exactly. money can do for you, right? It's and a lot of times, when you get money, you'll stop learning because you're going to go and spend it or do something, right? Yeah, exactly. But people always want to have money. You know, I mean, they 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 only want. They feel like they they look at money as as a barometer for success. And yeah. I don't look at I don't look at money like that. Yeah, I look at money as a byproduct of the things that I love to do that that comes my way, right? Yep, exactly. Oh, and and just, money really doesn't have any meaning. Money, we assign the meaning to it. That's right. That's exactly, exactly. And because a lot of times I ask people, is there such thing as too much money? You know, I was doing some research on the 10 wealthiest families in America. One, The number one family was called the Rothschilds. Now, these people, this family, this is a family. They have between one and two trillion dollars net worth. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is now that the question not, is, are they happy? No, no, money doesn't make you happy. Yep. You know that. You know that. Hey, I know people that are doing three or four hundred thousand dollars a year that are miserable. You know, and it because just because you have money don't mean you understand money. Exactly. Because you it's can have perspective. You can bring in five hundred thousand dollars a year, and your expenses are six hundred thousand. Yeah. That's stress, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you look good. But you know, in, inside you, you turn your your turmoil within. You know, so yeah, you got to kind of pace yourself. That's why I, a lot of the lottery winners, you know, either go broke or you know go insane or you know end up you know in jail or something like that because that's too much money to handle. Because I asked a yeah. guy, you now this is a guy that makes probably uh, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year. I I asked him. He, and he plays the lottery a lot. And I asked him, so what would you do if you won that hundred million? Would you hire an attorney? No, I can handle it myself. 
What? <laughs> and they, they really believe that. You know, they really believe you can handle a hundred million dollars and you only right. make eighty thousand dollars a year. Come on, you don't understand that. Yeah, exactly. Totally different practice, tax bracket. But there's benefits to getting that kind of money if you don't let it, you know, take. I don't want that type of money though, uh, Scott. I don't, I don't, I don't want that much money. I think, I think for me, I like one between one and two million. I'm, I'm happy because I'm. Yep. I'll tell you my age. I'm 62, so between mm -hmm. one and two million, I'm happy the rest of my life because I really don't need to do a lot, you know, other than travel and do what I want. And a lot of times, those expenses are paid for by different companies, right? So exactly. I don't have to eat that product uh, part of it, but. For the most part, you know, I, I just want to say thank you for deciding to start your business because my objective is to get as many entrepreneurs on this planet as I possibly can. I don't suggest you quit your job before you get it going, though. But, I, you know, I totally agree with that. Yeah, but, but you know, you can, do th you can do two things at once. And, you know, once your income starts to replace that work income, then it's time to, you know, go ahead and, you know, make that decision to, you know, give, give it up because you, you position yourself that I always share too that if you can make a dollar, you can make two. If you can make two, you can make four. You don't have to make a hundred and once. Just, you know, just exactly. Niche it up. And that's how I feel with the uh, clients that I have because they're all profit. I mean, right. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, and the thing is, well, they're, let, let me say this in a, in a better way. They're, they're all relationships that I'm connecting with and mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying their friendship the and you got money. The money is the byproduct, but, the, but it's all profit. And so the, it's if, like I said, at the very beginning is infinitely scalable. I'm just at a point right now where I can see myself booming very quickly. It's just a matter of uh, going back to the goals. It's, it's just a matter of focus and, and, and knowing yourself and knowing how confident you are in what it, what it is you're doing. So absolutely. But you don't want to overweight. You don't want to put too much on your pl on your proverbial plate because you also got to realize you got. This is what I think too. What are what are my clients saying about me? You know what I mean? Because word of mouth travels quickly. So yep. are they saying good things, or they're just saying, you know, uh, would you, if, they, if I, someone asked, would you recommend Larry James? I always like that answer to be absolute. You know what I'm saying? I don't yep. like that answer. Anyway. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, what what have I gotten out of the deal? You know, I don't really understand. You know, so I always like to make certain that. I deliver above what, you know, I agree to. And exactly. that's just a conscious thing that I do. And uh, I know because I understand how universally things work when it comes to uh, giving and receiving, doing for others as you would have them doing for you. Those Completely. types of things are absolutely essential. You know, you know, you can't see an opportunity. Like, if you, let's say, one of my favorite phrases is this. When a man with money meets a man with experience, the man with money is going to walk away with experience and the man with experience is going to walk away with money. <laughs> you yep. know what I'm so buyer beware, you know, caveat emptor. You got to make certain that the person you're dealing with is not going to take advantage of you because you don't know. Because yep. a lot of times an expert can ask you two or three questions about what it is you're asking to get done. And that will let them know whether or not you know what you're asking for. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yep. And then they can charge you more because, hey, we got a sucker. I, I see that all the time when an athlete, a professional athlete goes from college to pro and then they get like $20 million and then they don't know how to handle money. They get yep. an agent who knows that they don't know how to handle money and then I've they rely it. on the agent to do everything. Well, you know, the lawyer. And then they'd be bitter because they, you know, you're dealing with millions of dollars. Oh yeah, totally. It's crazy. That, that'll get you hurt. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where the inner growth and wisdom and, you know, my experience when I was homeless and the times that I was bankrupt and, and I was injured three times from skiing because I was trying to figure out who I was. Okay. You know, I did a personal blog on my Facebook page and it's public about my journey to success. And I'm doing that daily now. And so this is something that I, I want to share to other people and be raw. Because the last thing that I want is be behind smoke and mirrors. And I know what that's like too. And so I, I, I'm tired of living behind a, you know, a bullshit curtain. I'm ready to be authentic, you know, be authentic sure. and be who I am. And yeah. that's why all the things that I spoke to you about, it is what it is. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very that's happy. That's where your life went. That's yep. where your life went. But trust this, trust this. Somewhere else's life was worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying?
Oh, it could be a lot worse. Oh, absolutely. You can listen to, you can have pity parties for how your life went, and you go talk to me, and then you start to say, well, my life wasn't too bad after all, you know? Right. You know, because that's where it is. It's always someone worse off or better off. It just depends on where you are. That's why I, finding your peace is very important in life. Where, where, where you balanced, you know? Right, and the gratitude brings in the balance. Absolutely. Uh, before I leave, I want to share one more thing with you that I... Yeah, completely. ...that I studied this week. Uh, I was listening to a podcast, and uh, a guy was talking about the 12 jewels of life, the 12 jewels of life. And you can play this back later once, you, once I put it on your page. But yeah, yeah. He said the 12 jewels of life are knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, that's three, freedom, justice, and equality, that's six, food, clothing, shelter, that's nine, love, peace, and happiness, that's all 12. And he said, but peace, peace is the absence of confusion. So when you think about all those in conjunction, if you're, if you're able to identify that you're able to gain knowledge, you're able to utilize your wisdom, you're able to have an understanding about what it is you're doing, and you just go on down the list. By the time you get to the bottom of the list, you'll be able to say, well, you know what, I need to add a little bit more clothing, or I need to be a little bit more, use equality in a different perspective, right? Exactly. But it's, it's, a, it's a way to keep you working on you, because that's our biggest obstacle, start to finish, is us. We all can be successful at what, whatever it is we want to be, but we have to get over our ourselves and our ego plays a big part in that you know it's huge yeah you know, a lot of times our ego will put us in a place that you know it only it only takes it can only take the god that we pray to to get us out of that you know what i mean yeah i know so what that's we like we don't really want to be in that part of town too much because you know hey, sometimes yeah, it's busy <laughs> you know with other things okay well listen scott i really do appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to come and share a little time with me and my audience and uh it's about the bewitching hour right now. So if you'd like to leave your email address for your website for my uh, audience, I'd appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. So before I get into that, I want to put things into perspective. So when we beat ourselves up and we're hard on ourselves, um, that's a reflection of our insecurities. And um, maybe we have this thought of not feeling like we're good enough. I want to remind everybody that it's not about the destination. It's about the journey and enjoying the journey each and every single way. Um, I know that I started less than two years, but I know that that's really quick from, from where I was to where I'm at right now, already doing a, you know, a workshop and already doing a, um, a book, an international book. And so that's very quick. And we get a, we get hard on ourselves very quickly. And so the less we're hard on ourselves, the more we can accelerate that success for ourselves because we're not incorporating any resistance. Um, you know, I don't know if you're if you study Exler Hiss or Abraham Hicks, but she talks about releasing the resistance and allowing what you want to come to you. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm all about scientific, but I'm also about law of attraction too. So absolutely, that, that's also a note that I wanted to talk to your, your audience about. Okay. So now my email is info at live extraordinary inc dot com. Okay, info at live extraordinary inc dot com. Yep. Got it. I got it. Okay. Well, uh, Scott, I always like to end the show by saying my name is Larry James. My company is Speak with Larry. And as always, share with someone else what I've shared with you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Scott. And we'll yeah, thanks a lot, Larry. Bye-bye. Yeah, it was great connecting with you and let's keep in touch. Okay. We'll do. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.